Korean monitors! That was out of control. I apologize a little bit. 1440p monitors from Korea. We've purchased 25 or 30 of these and only had one bad one and we were able to fix it by throwing it into the oven. Don't do that at home. Now you guys are looking at four monitors right now. It's overwhelming and confusing and amazing. Now let's break down which monitor is which. In the back is the Shimian that we've looked at before and uh, that one is just the panel. It's, it's the basic model of the Shimian. And then on the left we have uh, the X-Star that we have also looked at before. The new monitors here are the first monitor right in the middle. Then also on the right we have another X-Star that uses the same model number except they put multi on the end. So these are the two that are that are new that we've never looked at before. And the one in the middle, the first here, the, the reason that this one is a little bit more expensive is, is that it has a lot of inputs and outputs and we'll get into that in just a second. It is also a super IPS panel. So you've got more control over color. It's just a slightly better version of IPS. It's a newer version as well. And on the right, this one is a little bit cheaper, but also has an HDMI. So you get more ports. Uh, that adds a tiny, tiny bit of latency. Nothing that I actually noticed with my physical eye playing video games or anything, but some people have reported, hey, it's, there's more latency, it's scary. Um, but I, like I said, I didn't notice anything. And this one is an AHVA panel. Uh, so it's similar to IPS. It's vertical alignment. It's a different technology slightly. And uh, it's going to be a lot better than a TN panel as far as viewing angles, uh, color shift, and all that sort of thing. But it's not quite as good as a TN panel when it comes to the, uh, the speed. Now, it's pretty damn good. Uh, they're advertising a 4 millisecond response time. Uh, so that's, that's really good. So it's somewhere in between an IPS and a, a TN panel, but I thought that the AHVA, it's slightly more washed out, but really it looks way, way better than a TN panel, and if you're on an extreme budget, it is priced nicely. Now, there are, there are some nuances here. We're going to talk about that, and I'm also going to compare this one to the original X-Star, the DP2710, uh, the one with the AHVA panel, is the DP2710 Multi, and Multi means that you're going to get multiple inputs. You also have an HDMI 1.4 input and an audio input. Uh, that's really handy if you're someone who's overloaded your graphics card or your motherboard and just needs an extra port, or if you're someone who just wants to use HDMI, it's really, really handy. Now, the downside is having multi, it does add a tiny bit of, I guess, latency, but I didn't personally notice anything. The board that's inside there supports 120 hertz uh, overclocking. Actually, the panel does. And the board that's in there, um, it's, it supports a virtual 4K resolution. That's UHD 3840 by 2160 resolution. Now, you know, we went ahead and tested it. The 120 hertz resolution was dropping a lot of frames, like enough for me to say, you can use this if you're playing videos or watching movies or if you're just using the computer for general purpose or whatever. Um, but if you're going to be playing games, seriously, maybe some light gaming could be okay. It was dropping too many frames for my taste. I tried it out with Quake and found that it was a bit difficult to aim. It was a, felt, just felt a bit weird. Um, but when I brought it back down to 60 hertz, it felt just about as good as any other monitor. Uh, some people complain online, you know, adding the extra the HDMI plus the DVI adds... Uh, it adds some latency and then there's some lag, but I, I did not notice any. That's compared to, you know, the others that we were testing. It, it did not feel any different. Even when I was playing games, it did not feel any different. Now, the one thing I can say about the AHVA is that it is really inexpensive. So it's not quite as uber as an IPS panel, yes. It's much better than a TN panel, unless you need crazy fast response times, but you're going to get a TN washed out image with terrible viewing angles. So it's just really, really good price. Plus you get HDMI and, uh, uh, you know, DVI. All right, now let's move on and talk about the first FSM uh, 270YV. And the one I'm going to be using for my personal rig, you guys can see it over there in the background. I've already set it up. Uh, I really like it. The contrast is great on this Super IPS panel. Um, I mean, the colors look really nice. The viewing angles are really good. Um, it's not exactly a, a matte display, but um, I've noticed that the glare is not that bad, and we did some glare tests on all three of these. I mean, the X-Stars, they have the nice matte coating on them, so they're going to be really, uh, really nice when it comes to glare, uh, better than just a panel, and definitely better than having a, a glossy finish on the outside. Uh, but the first was, was not bad in comparison. I thought it, would, I thought it did a really good job. Um, the static contrast ratio is 1,000 to 1 on this one. Viewing angles, they advertise uh, 178, and it, it, to me, it looks pretty good from just about any angle that you look at it. Uh, of course, 16.7 million colors. And uh, the thing that really makes this one different than the other ones is the fact that you have a lot of options for inputs and outputs for the money. I mean, it's a 
50 bucks more or whatever than most of them out there. But you're going to get a DVI. It's a dual-link DVI. you got audio in. Uh, you've got two HDMI ends. you got your um, VGA. You also have a display port. Big deal for me. And then on the other side, there's um, actually a component input. So you have component as well. The monitor also has a lot of options for audio. You've got audio in and out, and you even have an SP diff, and you can use the HDMI as well for audio. So it's going to be quite crazy when it comes to the ins and outs and that's why i'm using it i've overloaded my system back there with like four monitors and i was using a lot of adapters so i'm going to be using the display port on that i've uh, sent my shimmy in away and if you guys are, are gaming and you just need a really good primary 1440p monitor the one that you want to look at in my opinion is the dp2710 from x star it's got a beautiful matte finish it's a, a a pls panel from samsung that almost looks uh in my opinion it looks oh god it looks almost the same as the as the first monitor with the uh with the sips it looks side by side those are the two that you really cannot tell apart you could probably use them together and, and not have any issues just as far as like the image quality goes uh the one thing you get a little bit uh, a few more options with the sips as far as adjusting the color and stuff but um yeah the, the x-star is really nice the other thing that's nice is um it only has dual link dvi so it's just you're basically just plugging it straight into the panel so you're getting rid of any latency that would be happening there the response times you know decent not as good as like a tn panel of course but i've always you know gamed on on a monitor like that the shimmy is very similar uh, but i've gamed on the x-star and um they're not like i said again not as good as a tn panel but you're getting the, all the benefits of ips pls and it's just a really nice experience now the ahva panel did advertise that you could overclock this to 120 hertz they also said hey you you guys can do virtual 4k because the board supports it so i was like okay you can overclock this thing like crazy so the first thing i did was i decided to try out 120 hertz on this panel and uh for gaming nope you're dropping a lot of frames in fact cranking this thing up to like 80 90 hertz you're still dropping frames it's not that bad but once you get up to 120 hertz, yeah, it runs, it looks fine, videos look really good and that sort of thing. Um, and, and games are actually not that bad, but I found it, it didn't it felt a little weird. You could tell that something was wrong. You are dropping a few frames here and there. Uh, not a zillion, but you are dropping a few frames here and there. So 120 hertz, you can use it if you want to. If you're doing productivity, it may be, may be fine for that. I decided to try to overclock the, uh, the first monitor as well. And um, that one... As soon as you go above like 80 or 75 hertz, it starts to drop a few frames. I mean, it's not awful. I was gaming really well at uh, 75 hertz. 85 hertz was okay. I'm um, actually doing better than I've done in a long time. Once you get to around 90, you start to see some artifacting, actually. So it's, it's, it's pretty rough. I, I would not recommend overclocking that panel. The backlight bleed on the first makes this no longer my first choice check out that backlight bleed it's not as noticeable when you've got like full color going on all over the screen uh, sometimes in the darker colors you'll start to notice it over here especially it almost looks like something's wrong a lot of backlight bleed on most monitors is kind of like that but get a load of that over there when you're watching like a letterbox movie it's really apparent when you're playing a game that's you know dark like doom 3 or amnesia it's really apparent uh, let me show you what the uh, the x-star looks like over here this is the, the just the, the pls x-star very good um, as far as the backlight bleed goes. Very, very good indeed. So that, that one makes me happy. Um, I'm actually using, right now, I'll put the first over here in the middle. I wanted to run multiple monitors and I needed display port, so it, that's in the middle. I'm going to switch these. The X-Star, um, even though the, you know, the first monitor is a super IPS panel and has really good color and really good options, the PLS panel here on the X-Star is amazing. And I also want to note that the uh, the backlight bleed on the AHVA is uh, is very good, and not quite as bad as the um, as the first here. So what I'm going to say is I would recommend the first if you really need all of the uh, the options. And for the money, it's hard to compete with. But the X Star is still my favorite right now. The X Star and also the Shimmy are both just really really good monitors. I like the X Star for the matte finish. The Shimmy maybe for the tiniest bit of sharpness, maybe like almost unnoticeable unless you're on top of it but xdr is still my favorite ahva is great for the money first if you need the options so let me tell you where we've been getting these things and we were really 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 having a good experience we use dream seller on ebay and there's a link right here on the screen in front of my face my face is gone right now because my face is a link uh dream seller uh we've bought pretty much 30 of these like i said from dream seller and um there's not one dead pixel in this lot of four that we picked up just now. All came from Korea. 
and they were here in like four days. So we've had really good experiences with Dream Seller, and uh, he's also been pretty good if we ever need anything, we email him and they're like, oh, hey, yes, we can help you out with that. So uh, I do recommend Dream Seller on eBay. I haven't tried too many of the other ones. Maybe I can try some of the other eBay shops. If you guys have had a good experience with a different eBay shop, by all means, let us know where you guys are getting your Korean monitors, and uh, we'll talk. All right, we'll see you guys next time.